Welcome once again to Inside Athletics, brought to you by the IAAF. I'm in Orlando to interview this guy, the reigning world champion in the 110 hurdles. David Oliver, What's up, man? thanks Good for joining me on the program, you, man. Always, always. So let's start, let's start talking about the 2013 season. Mm. You're the reigning world champ, but it's a season where it took you a while to sort of come along. Describe what the 2013 season felt like for you. Uh, well, it was, you know, started out kind of frustrating because training was going well, but I just couldn't get the performance together. Uh, you know, me and you have talked several times in the hurdles. It's about your timing and your technique and everything that has to come right. together at right. once. No matter how great you've been doing, if you don't get the, the timing and the rhythm, it doesn't show itself in the competition. So it took me seven races before I finally got, you know, to, st to below 13, 30 that year. But I think when I get it going, then I always start, you know, getting it rolling from there. Uh, uh, you know, winning the world title was amazing. The best, you know, performance of my career, you know, the highlight to this point and, uh, you know, just try to keep it going. Now, if we look at the U.S. ranks for 100 meter hurdling, the women, yeah. the U.S. by far yeah. is the strongest country in the world. But then you look at the men's side, the U.S. is strong. Right. But you guys have, I mean, if we, if we started to look at who could win worlds this year, I mean, it could be from France, America, Cuba, anywhere. Yeah, Jamaica. What did Jamaica, yeah. right, Jamaica with Hansel Parchment and some yeah. others. Tell me about how is it that there's so much parity around the globe right now in this event? It, it, it seems to me like more than maybe any other event, there's no other event that you can point to, certainly on the men's side, mm -hmm. where you have three, four, five different countries capable of winning worlds in a sprint event this year. Uh, I really think it's just about, it's parity and, and everything's cyclical. I yeah. mean, the U.S. hadn't won a title since Allen in 2003. Before you did it. No, uh, well, you know, Richardson winning in 20. 11 right right you know Merritt in 12 myself in 13 you know but before that before Allen the was the last one right. so everything's cyclical so you know now we're kind of back winning a lot but uh, you know last year opened up uh, some avenues but the hurdles are so hard to predict I mean it's very tough to go back to back as you can see you know from you know, Lou went in and Allen went in and then just having down periods myself, you know, after 2010, it's just, and Merritt after uh, 12 and Richardson and then, you know, myself last year having problems and it's just, it's hard. <laughs> I mean, I think it's because it's a tough event on your body. It's not very natural and it's very easy, easy to get injured if, if you're not, you know, doing things the correct way, but it's always new blood as well, which keeps it exciting. Uh, I think the U.S. has a really good uh, young talent, but you, Frank, the, uh, the French have a lot of good Martin young guys. Lombard. Yeah, and uh, another young guy, I, I, I don't uh, remember his name, but he's, uh, I think he won like World Juniors or something. So they have somebody coming yeah, as well. Yeah, yep. So, you know, they've got guys, you know, Jamaica's got guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's cool, you know, I'm, I'm 33. <laughs> I know you so, like the competition. Yeah, I like competition, but I figure, you know, hey, if I do what I do, I'll be perfectly fine. I don't really worry about, uh, you know, other competitors, and I just need to execute, you know, my race and do what I do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how it changes, man. Uh, I remember Alan Johnson told me way back in the day, he was like, you know, you come into the sport and you get on the bus to go to USA Championships and you don't know anybody. Right. You, you know, several years later, you know everybody on the bus. Then right. at the end of your career, you, you don't know all, anybody. It's all young guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's funny how, how you see that slowly but surely happening. Right. You know, all the guys I came with and started with and stuff like that is very, very few guys left. And uh, that's why I'm just thankful and happy that, you know, I had the longevity and you know I'm still doing it at a, at a really high level. Do you feel pressure because you said you're 33. You have the Olympic bronze from back in oh, Beijing. Yeah. You have your world title. But you have to know that if you don't get your Olympic gold medal in Rio, the chances of you getting it in Tokyo yeah. are slim to none. Is that something that maybe now you're starting to feel that sort of pressure as somebody getting up there in, in age? Uh, not really, to be honest. Uh, I take everything year to year. For me, Beijing is the most important thing going on right now is right. the title. Then after this season, then it will turn like, yeah, like the writing's on the wall. If it doesn't happen at 16, man, the likelihood of it happening is, is, is next to none, to right. be completely honest. You know, I'm a, and that uh, <laughs> gives you no pressure whatsoever. You don't nah. feel like, listen, I mean, I, okay, yes, I'm focused on Beijing this right. year, but I have to be in the shape of my life, injury-free next year to have a shot at that goal because, That's as you true. know, track and field athlete, you get remembered by how you do in mm -hmm. the Olympics. But, I mean, for me, I'm a very self-aware man, and 
you know, if I never step foot on a track again, mm -hmm. I still won. You know, from right. where I came from right. and the things that I was doing to where I'm at now, nobody, nobody would have thought that, nope. And you know, I didn't even really think so. <laughs> you know, to be honest, so, I mean, right. at the end of the day, I won. I got, I mean, I live a great lifestyle. I've won a gold medal before. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been to the Olympics and, and had success there. I've had success in Europe. You know, uh, you know, I've, I've touched, you know, uh, people's lives. And, you know, I have a lot of people that support me and right. things like that, which is really important. Uh, so it's like, man, I'm winning anyway. <laughs> uh, that's why I think that's why I never get down, because it's like, right. man, I'm winning anyway. Yeah, you, <laughs> it's yeah, like, you are, the, you are the, my favorite person to interview after a loss, because yeah. win or lose, you're the same way. It's like, hey, yeah. I had a bad race. See you at the next race. Yeah. I won. <laughs> Doesn't matter next race, next, see you race. The next race. Every day, it's always year to year, race to race in this, yeah. man. Just because you did well this race, you've got to go again and do it again. That's, you know, it's very tough like that, but it's cool because it's like, now that's pressure. You know, when you have a great season going and you know, like, worlds is coming, like, man, I've been killing, like, all the diamond leagues or something. I have to do well now, right? You know, but if you, but then again, if you weren't doing well, you still have opportunity. Every weekend is a new opportunity to erase what you did bad the previous week. That's so. right. There's a bunch of hurdlers, yourself included, who change their start in order to take fewer steps to the first hurdle, and we've gone over it because we talked about it with you and with Jason and with Dyron. How is it that a hurdler is able to change something as? critical as a start so they take they're taking fewer steps for, to the first order uh, well to me I think the whole you know change into seven strides is very overrated and overblown really mm -hmm. it's all even about though a guy like Jason Richardson it would seem like not uh, not Jason Aries mm -hmm. changed it mm -hmm. and broke the world record the same year or the next year yeah coincidental but maybe so but I mean I just I think it's all about the individual. Okay. Like if somebody, if I was your height and I'm doing, and I see everybody doing seven, that doesn't mean that that's going to be that's effective for, for me. You, right. you look at a guy like, you know, Lu Zhang ran 1291 and 1288 and stuff doing eight steps. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was running 12 seconds, running eight steps, but it was just putting me, I find seven personally puts me in a better position to attack the first hurdle and then helps down the, the track. As, a far, as opposed to being so far back. Right. And then, you know, doing eight, cause I, you know, it was just such a, it was, it was tough. Cause I was like, you know, I'd have to put my blocks back and try to make my first step on the line so that I wouldn't have, uh, you know, get too close. Right, right. Cause I'd always fall on the first hurdle in, in college and things like that. And I couldn't, close to yeah, one. Okay. yeah, so I couldn't figure out why. But then Brooks came up to me in 2008 and he told me like, oh, we're gonna, you know, think about changing to seven steps next year. And I never even knew anything about right, it. So, right, right. but I mean, I guess it's all individual, but I think it's overrated and overblown. It's not for everybody. And yes, people have had success, but I think Merritt would have been killing in 2012, no matter Regardless, what he was no matter doing. How many steps yes, doing. because look, if you look at the frequency and the things that like his stuff later on in the race, it was so impressive mm -hmm. that I highly doubt just because he took one step out, maybe it allowed him to get to his top end speed, like between one and two instead. I mean, maybe it pushed it back instead of getting it like two and three, he was able mm -hmm. to get it to one and two. Like that's one thing I found for myself that I was able to get down to running like uh, 1.0 you know one flat in between one and two as opposed to pushing it down the track later at like between three and four right. that's what helped me out with it but um i still think it's a little okay, bit over right on. on the subject of frequency brooks told me this a year or two ago and i went that can't be right until you actually look at the race all hurdlers take the same number of steps yeah. after hurdle one to the finish line how can that be yeah it's, Explain that to me. Because it's like a, it's a dance, man. It's just like the waltz. So or everybody something. takes what? Four steps in between? Three. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. Three. <laughs> yeah, three. Everybody, it's, it's choreographed. So, you know, that's why. So you create separation between you and the other person by being more efficient in those three steps? You, yeah, you have to, or you have to be more efficient over the top. Like, I'm more efficient over the top, but not so much in between. Mm -hmm. You know, other people like Give Merit. Give an example, and, yeah, of somebody who's Yeah, Merit's very efficient in between. Okay. Maybe he's a little, like, a little slower over the top or whatever, but his in between is just so great. You know, you know, a guy like Robles had, yes. had the best of both worlds. You know, his frequency in between and his technique over the top was, was very quick. But, uh, yeah, that's just the only way you make up ground. That's the only way. Because that's why I say you can't make up time in the air. You and have to take it. Right. Yeah. And that's something people can prove. You can look at the slow-mo replay and look. Everybody's taking those, yeah, those three the steps. Same in exact, yeah, exactly. I want to talk to you a little bit about Lu Shang. You mentioned him just now. He has officially retired now, and people are saying, why now? Um, rather than asking you about 
his career and what his legacy is. We know what his legacy yeah. is to you know to, to the people of China and, and what he meant to this sport. But I want I want you to tell me a little bit about your relationship with him as well as what sort of a competitor he was. Oh man, he was a hell of a competitor, <laughs> man. Like. Uh, it's funny, <laughs> I, I, you know, he, he started speaking English a little bit better. I first met him in 2005, New York had the first meet. It was the Reebok meet back right. then. And that was my first big meet I ever went to right out of college. And I spent my whole time in warm up looking at what he was doing. I was like, man, this you guy won the, yeah, because yes. he had just come off right. winning the world, Olympic I mean, Olympics and breaking mm -hmm. the record. And I was like, man, what does he do? You know, because I think in order to be good, you have to learn from the greats yes. if you want to be great. You can't, you know, resent success or you'll never be success. You can't resent money or you'll never make money, you know. Right. You have to learn. And I'm looking at him the whole time like, man. And I was like, but he's not looking like he's doing anything <laughs> special. He doesn't like, you know. Okay, but now you know yeah. that, that young man was special. Yeah. What is it that he was able to do? Was he a great technician? I mean, we know he didn't have yeah. flat speed. He's a lot like you in that he doesn't kill you. He's not going to be able to run 10-2. Or yeah. 10 flat like a Terrence Trammell. What made him so great? Just the technique, and it was always consistent. Yeah, it was consistent from the first hurdle to the last. You know, that's like we all knew. Like if you go to a race, I remember in 2011, that was the first time I lost was in Shanghai, after like you know not losing for 2010 and stuff right, like that. Right, right, right. Did and you lose to him? Yeah, he won, and I got second, and I was like, man. You know, but I knew from the beginning. I knew when I went to Shanghai, I was like, man, if I don't get to the first hurdle in a better position than him, right. then you're probably going to lose because right. he's, he's not going to give it. Yeah, he doesn't give, give it back. back right. uh, everybody else, uh, you know, has given it back at some point in time. But this is a guy that's run down guys running 1295, 1298, wow. you know. But then if we went to Prefontaine the very next race. I remember that. And I had run 1294 and he ran 13 flat. Mm -hmm. But he actually got out and I was able to, you know, to you close and beat him right. doing the, and I was, that's the first time I've, ever. and only time I've ever <laughs> remember him getting quote unquote ran down, if you want to call it that. Right, right. But, but you knew he was going to bring it. If he came to a meet, you knew he was ready. Cause if he wasn't ready, he wouldn't just, I don't think he'd come. Right. And tell me about your plans post career. What do you see yourself doing? You're 33 now. Yeah. What do you see yourself doing at 43? Oh, 43, <laughs> 10. Yeah. I, hopefully I'm not, you know, Doing any, you know, having to be doing something I don't want to do. Right. You know, you still want to be running? No. No, I no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> right, I mean, man. my. When did Alan stop? Alan, I know. Alan hung on I know. for a long time. Alan is the model, man. He ran 12 seconds at 36 years old. Wow. You know, so I would love to run. I tell you what, I won't ever, when I retire, it won't be, I wake up like, man, I think I could have, or I wish I, now I would know I got every last drop out of it. You know, my contract runs out in a few years and I'll probably, you know, that might be it, depending on if I'm still running, if I'm so able to run fast. you to just say, okay, I'm done in Rio or I'm nah. done in London, or you haven't said, you, have, mm -hmm. you don't have some kind of, no, really? So if you're Olympic champion in 16, I'm still you're going. Not ready, really? Yeah, because why not? Because well, then yeah. you got 2017. The money's going to be, yeah. be great. But 2017 is a new, a whole new, you know, entity on itself. Right, you know, right. who knows what might happen then. If I was good enough to win in 16, then I'm good Why enough not? to win right. in 17. Right. If I'm good enough to win in 17, you know, I can still run on the Diamond League in 18. Or, you know, be ideal is you just win and then make <laughs> like 18, like a swan song where you say, hey, these are like the meets I'm going. Tour. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Right. yeah, like a big, just retire on top. Right. 17, you win. 18, you're like, hey, I'm going to these 15 right and then they do like some sort of tour for you, you know, put together, you know, that would <laughs> be Lewis great. had one of those, Michael Johnson had one of those. Yeah, so yeah. see, like that doesn't happen anymore, you know, it's just because I see, I saw the tail end of Allen's career and it's just like, man, he's not even getting the love that he should have gotten. Right, right. You know, he's the greatest of all time. Don't stick around too long, that's the lesson. Yeah. Don't stick around too long. <laughs> yeah. Leave him wanting more, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, but at the same time though, whether you got first or last, that money doesn't know how it got in your account. Like whether you yeah. got first, fifth, you know, you still have to make a living. Yeah. If you're good enough to make a living, then keep going. Well, you know, in my next life, I want to come back as a hurdler. Maybe I'll come back, you know, three, four inches uh, taller. So I appreciate you uh, coming on the show and yeah. talking hurdles with me. Man. Oh, thanks, man. It's always good. Dude. Thank you. Chop it up with you, man. <laughs> <All> always. <right. laughs>